how to create an interactive dashboard in Excel. This is what we're going to see in today's video. And here we're not going to need to use pivot tables or pivot charts. We're only going to need to use two functions to do this beautiful dashboard here in Excel. We're going to start from a data set and we can also download this data set. Just click in the link in the description down below, 100% free. And from this data set right here, we're going to build our dashboard. And through this dashboard, we're going to be able to make analysis, such as, for example, the total sold per month by year. We can click here in the year and choose 2023 or either 2024 or 5, for example. So we can choose this option. We're going to have here a list. We're going to create it step by step. And we also have here a condition format to show us the lowest value through a red color, for example, and the largest value through a green color. We have here this color scale. Here down below, we have a column chart where we can see the sales through the months. And here above, we have the done chart in Excel where we can compare the total sold per product, for example. And we can either see the product that just sold the most by the size of the slice or either by the value itself that is here over the slice, for example. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let's go find out how can you do it step by step. Before we create the dashboard itself, maybe it's important to start understand what we have here in this data set. Basically, in the first, basically I have here a sales report. As the first column, I have the date and then order ID, product name, customer name, quantity, freight, and the total. We can create a dashboard through this data that we have here. I have a lot of columns and a lot of rows, uh, but we can start to create in the dashboard with, uh, let's say, a large information, such as the total sold, for example. And then we can make it more specific, the total sold per month, for example, or the total sold by year per month, for example. I think it's a good analysis to do here. So let's start with it. Uh, but before we start to make analysis here, maybe it's important to create a new sheet to input our dashboard, to create our dashboard. I'm going to click here in this new sheet button and then right click, rename. This sheet right here is going to be called dashboard, for example. Okay. Just here in the first cell or actually in the cell B2, I can start to type in here uh, year, for example. And here I can choose either 2023 or 2024 or 2025, for example. But Instead of manually typing in the year here, I can create a list. I just need to click in the cell 2025 here, for example, cell C2, and then I can go to data. Here to the right, I can click on data tools, data validation. And I, instead of using, let's say, allow any value, I'm gonna choose allow list. And here as my list, as my source, I gonna want to use 2023 as an option, comma 2024, comma 2025. OK, enter. And as you guys can see, my, my list here is done. Now I can choose in between each one of these values that I have here, 2023, 24, and 2025. Here, now down below, I can type it in month. And now in the next column, I can type it in total, for example. As the month, I, I'm going to have January, February, and so on, so on. But one more time, uh, instead of just manually typing in each one of the months that we have through one year, I can just type it in January, for example, or Jan. And here in this down right corner of the cell, I can click, hold, and drag down to ask a help for Excel. And uh, Excel is going to make the sequence for me. January, February, March, April, and so on, so on. Now to get here as result, the total sold in January of 2024, and then in February of 2024, and so on, so on. We can use here the sum function. Not exactly, but we can use the sum if function, sum ifs function because the sum function is going to add up all the values that we selected in a range, for example. But if we, we use the sum ifs function, it's only going to add up the values that match with the criteria that we're going to input here. And in this case, we have two conditions, the year and January, two criteria. So let's start here with the sum ifs function. But before we do it, I'm going to come back here to the data set itself. And as you guys can see, I'm going to use as criteria the months, like January, for example, and also years, such as 2023, for example. And these two informations here are not in my data set. Of course, if you consider this data right here, for example, uh, January 2nd of 2023, of course, it's January and then it's also 2023. So the two conditions are met here, but there's a problem. Excel, I, I can see that uh, it's January and 2023, but Excel cannot see it. So I need to extract the month and the year from this date that I have here. And to do it, before we use the sum ifs function, 
with these two criteria, I need to use the text function to extract the month and the year from the, this date that we have here. Uh, in the column age and column i, for example, I can start here with the column age. I'm going to type it in equal sign text function, double click to select, one, two. As the first criteria that uh, the text function is asking me, value, I can select here the date that I'm going to use, the first date, comma. As format test, I can use here the three times the letter M because I want to extract just the month. Open quotations, MMM, close quotations marks, close parentheses, and then enter. And as you guys can see, I got here as result the January month. Before we drag down it to all the rows that we have, let's do it here to the column I, equal sign the text function again, but this time to extract the year from the date that we have. I can select here the date and then comma as the format text. Now I'm going to use quote YYY unquote close parentheses. Here I'm using Y because I want to extract the year. Enter. And as you guys can see, we're done. Let me just select these two previous functions here, preview cells. And then here in the down right corner of the cell, I can double click or click and hold and drag it down. Double click here, one, two, and we're done. Now I have here. The January month, February, March, April, May, July, and so on and so on. For all the years that I have, 2023, 2024, and also 2025. Now we can come back to the dashboard itself, and uh, we can continue to do this total sold. For example, using now the equal sign, the sum ifs function. Double click here to select one, two. As my sum range, I want to use the total sold. So I can come back here to the data set. And I need to select now the column G, for example, the entire column G, because I want to add up all the values in the total sold column that is going to match with the two criteria that I'm going to input in my function. I can, you can follow along here for, through this formula bar. Joma, as my criteria range number one, my first criteria range, I can either select the January here, for example, the column H, or the column I, for example. I'm going to stick with the column H as the first criteria range, comma. And as I select the column H, where I have the months as my first criteria, I need to select here to input as my criteria number one, the, the month that I'm gonna use. That way I need to come back here to the dashboard and select the first month that I'm gonna use, that is January, for example, comma. And here through the formula bar, as you guys can see, now the criteria that I need to input here is the, the second criteria range, the second criteria range. As the second criteria range now, I need to use the year. So let me come back here to the, da the data set and I'm gonna choose here the column I. Comma. And as the criteria number two, the second criteria, I'm gonna come back to the dashboard and I'm gonna select here the year 2024 in this case here. But before we press enter, one thing here is very important to press the F4 key button because that way we can lock the reference. Whenever, let's say, if you just click in the cell, click, hold, and drag down, the selection of the 2024, the 2025, the year, the selection of the year is going to stay in the same cell. It's not going to drag down along with the, the function. So this is why you need to press the F4 key to add this dollar sign before the letter and before the number. Close parentheses, and then you can press Enter. I can click here in the down right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down to you, the row 15, for example. Now I can select everyone here and change it to, let's say, a current currency format. Home tab, and I can choose here this dollar sign, for example. Okay, the our first analysis uh, is done. Now we can check how much I just sold in 2023, in 2025, or either in 2024, for example. So I can have two conditions here. The first one is the year. And the second one is the months that are that we have here. As our first analysis is done, we can move on now and create the charts, for example. But before we do it, let me click here in the column A, right click, and then column width. I can change this column width to two, for example. Okay. And now I'm gonna select the column B and the column C, right click, and then column width. Here I'm gonna choose 15, for example. Okay. Let me just select uh, everything here again. And then home tab, I'm gonna centralize here in the middle. I'm gonna put here, let's say borders in everything, all borders. Now I'm gonna choose these two headers that I have here and then home. 
put it in bold, change the background color to uh, dark gray, for example, and put the font in this white right here. Just this list that I have, I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to stick, let's say, uh, a yellow one, and the font, I'm going to use a black color, like this. Okay, I think now it's good. And one more thing that we can do here. Yeah, let's say the minimal value I want you to paint with a red color. And uh, the largest one I want you to paint with green, for example. So I want you to create this, this grade, let's say, that way. I can select everyone here, and then I can go to the Home tab. And here to the right, Condition Formatting, Color Scale, and I can choose here the first option, green, yellow, and, uh, and red. I can click here. And we're basically done now with the first analysis. To create the chart, let's say the first chart that I'm gonna use here, instead of just analyze the data through the, the numbers that we have here, through values, I actually want to make it more visual. So I want to use a column chart to help me visualize the, this data that I have here. So I can select everything here, and then I can go to the Insert tab, and I can choose here a chart, such as this clustered column, for example. Now I can move on this chart and just put here underneath this first table that we have. Just bring it a little down, a little bit to the left, and a little bit to the right, like this, for example. I think it's good. Now let's make some change here in the chart, but before we do it, let's read it off these grind lines that we have here in Excel, because I think it's gonna be better without this grind line. So I can click here in the View tab and uh, Grind Lines. Okay, like this. Now to the chart here, I can select the title, for example, and delete, read it off the title. I can also click here in these grind lines, delete, and also to the, these values right here in the left, I can read it off these values. As we just delete the values that was here in the left corner of the, the chart, now I don't know how much which one of the columns that we have here represents. So maybe it's a good idea to input the values just above the columns, for example. To do it with the chart selected, I can go to the chart design, and here to the left, add chart element, and then I can choose data labels and outside and, for example. Let me just double click here in the, the values that I have, one, two, and with this right panel right here, I can uh, choose, let's say, number, change the category from general to currency, for example, and decimal places are gonna stick with zero, enter because with zero decimal places, we have a more shorter number. I can click here in the blue column, for example, and the gap width, I can decrease a little bit this number right here to make the, the column a little bit thicker. Like I can use here maybe 70% or 75, I think it's gonna be good. I can also click here, effects, shadow, and choose here the first option, this one right here. I now can come back here to the fill line, order, Solid line, I think it's gonna be good with uh, some borders. I'm gonna use a black color and the width 0.75. Yeah, I think it's okay. Fill, gradient fill, and I'm gonna choose here a blue one like this. And our chart is almost done. Two more things that we can do here. Let me just close this panel right here. I'm gonna click in the chart area. I can go to home tab, put everyone here in bold, and select the font size as 10. And Format, shape, outline, black, like this. This chart right here now is done. We can move on and create another chart that uh, maybe can be a done chart. And with the done chart, we can analyze each one of the products that we have here in the data set and uh, the total sold per product. I know that I have here five different products, such as whey protein, omega-3, creatine, multivitamin, and uh, glutamine, for example. I can select everything here, Control c to Pope. Now I can come back here to the dashboard and I can paste, let's say here, maybe, Control v like this. Using again now the summary function, I can make the total sold by product, per product. And now we can also add, use as criteria the year 2025 or 2024 or whatever. So here we're gonna still have two different criteria, two different conditions. But the first one is going to be the product, and the second one is going to be the year itself. We're going to use again the sum ifs function to do it. The cosine sum ifs function. Let me just double click here, one, two. And we're going to place the data chart over this data that we are building here, okay? As the sum range, I'm going to choose 
the total column here, the column G, you can click here, comma, so following through this formula bar, my criteria range number one, my first criteria range can be the column C, where I have the products, comma, as my first criteria, I can select here in the dashboard and choose whey protein, comma, as my criteria range number two, I'm going to choose the year, so the column I, comma, and my last criteria, my criteria number two is going to be the year. So I can come back here to the dashboard and select here the cell C2. And here it's important to press the F4 key to lock the reference as I just explained it before. Close parentheses and then enter. Now I can click here in the down right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down to make sure all the rows contain the same function. And we're done with this analysis right here. I can select everything here and insert i can choose let's say the dunnet chart here this one right here now we can just place and move this chart over the analysis that we just did i can change the position a little bit like this bring it a little bit to the right i can click in the title and read it off and with the area of the chart selected instead of using the legend here just below the chart i'm going to put it to the left so i can Click in the area of the chart, chart design, and here to the left, add chart element, legend to the left, for example. Okay, now with the area selected, format, shape, outline, black. Now I'm going to double click in the slicers that I have here in this slice in my Dana chart. I want you to open this right panel. The first thing that I can do here is the angle of the first slice. And as you guys can see, if I increase here this angle, the chart is gonna rotate for me like this. I think 20 is good. Then at explosion, I'm gonna choose 3%. And then at whole size, I can choose, let's say 60% maybe. I think it's good. I can click here, effects, shadow. I can choose the first option as we did before to the column chart, the same option. Now here, fill and line. I'm not going to make any change here, but I'm going to change the border. So solid line and color black width. I'm going to choose 0.75 like this, for example. Now I can close here and we're done. Basically, just one interesting thing that we can do here is to add the values over the slices that we have. That way we can see and compare each one of the categories against each other by the size of the slicer and also by the value that each one of the slices is gonna, is gonna have. Let me click in the chart again, and chart design, here to the left, add chart element, data labels, show, for example, like this. Now I can double click in these values, want you to make some changes. As we are talking about here, currency, I can change the number, the category general to currency, and decimal places I can, again, use zero, enter. One more thing that we can do here, because it's not that easy to see the number through the color and the effects that we have in the slices, I can click in the view and line, view, solid view, and choose here a white color. And as transparency, I can use 30%. Maybe it's good that way. Yeah, I think it's good. Now I can close here. Let me just increase a little bit the size of this donut. Just click in the area of the donut, click hold, and uh, hold out, for example, hold and drag out like this. And I'm also going to move this legend a little bit to the right. And with the area of the chart selected, I can click home, put everyone in bold, and choose the font size as 10, for example. And I can click in these values right here, just over the slice, and increase it a little bit more, like 12, maybe. Yeah, I think now it's good. And we're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, if you change the year that we are using here as criteria, in your dashboard, you guys can see that all the dashboard is going to be automatically changed for you. Either the values to the left, the Dana chart, and here the, the column chart, 2024, 2023, and also we have here 2025. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video. I see you there.